Well, I just wanted to welcome the top three finalists for season 16 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Welcome all of you. Let's do, I'm going to say each greeting so everyone can attach the voice to the, the person talking. Safira, welcome. Hello. <laughs> Nymphia Wind, hello. Hi. And of course, Plain Jane. Hello, Plain. Hi, Diva. <laughs> it's so nice to to meet the three of you. I enjoyed this season and all three of you on it so, so, so much. And I want to start things off by asking Plain, how do you, because you were in that lip sync in, in one of the episodes that set up the top three finalists. How surprised were you that it was going to be a top three and not a top four as it has been previously? I don't know. I don't know if I was, I was surprised, you know, I feel like they throw drag race is known for throwing all sorts of curveballs mm -hmm. your way, you know, whether it's the contestants or the viewers. So I really, I really thought it could have gone either way. You know, I knew that, um, you know, none of us, none of us really knew how it was going to go, whether it was going to be a top three or top four. All I knew is that I was in the bottom and I needed to fight, you know, regardless of whether we were both getting saved. You know, I needed to show Mama Ru that, you know, the drive was still, still in me. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I did, baby. I, I put my and my into it and, you know, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that I was, super that i was entirely entirely surprised that both of us were not were not saved because you got to expect the unexpected baby yeah definitely well safira i want to ask you because one of the things that i loved about sort of just your narrative this season is you kind of played almost a motherly role in many aspects with a lot of the queens there were sort of as where you were helping and you were assisting and and for anyone who isn't sort of in a queer space or in the drag world or understands that that space, the role of mother, if you will, is actually, I think, a really vital role to who we are as sort of a queer family. And I wanted to know if 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 you if you thought that was really important, if you if you sort of cherished that role that you played this season. And what are your thoughts in general on sort of the role of mother in queer spaces like this? I think the role of mother is very important. It's very important that someone who has a lot of uh, experience and maybe even age um, imparts that, in, uh, like, imparts that experience and knowledge on the people who are coming under them. I think that if I can help someone, I'm always going to. That's just the way that I was raised. It's just the, it's just the way that I am as a person, and so. Um, and I never even thought about it as being a mother. I just thought about being me. Mm -hmm. I just thought I'm a very loving, caring person. And if someone needs help, I'm going to be there. If I see someone who looks like they need help, I'm going to let them know, hey, you look like you need help. Can Is there anything I can help you with? Yeah. Um, and if, you know, like in in certain instances, it might come off a little shady. A lot of my children will tell you that, um, Mama will get you together. It might not seem the nicest, but she will get you together and you'll be all the better for it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just a thing that mothers do as well. Then, you know, sometimes we, we don't have the best delivery, but it always uh, ends up in a better uh, result. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, Nymphia, I wanted to ask you because you had a moment, especially in one episode this season, where you were really vulnerable about talking about how oftentimes, you know, like so many, I think, queens can relate to, you use drag to sort of hide parts of yourself that maybe you're insecure about or embarrassed about or whatever it is. And drag is sometimes the vessel in which that gives you that confidence. I wanted to know what you learned about yourself in this process and how maybe you overcame some insecurities and, and, and just how you feel about all of that. Well, I haven't overcame any sort of insecurities just yet. I still don't want to see myself. That's why I still do drag. But I think drag is a perfect medium to really just, you know, feel a fantasy that you've never maybe experienced throughout your life just to, you know, feel beautiful and confident. Because I feel like when you feel confident in yourself, I feel like it opens so much in what you see in the world, you feel more free and feel more brave and courageous to really go out there and show yourself and do stuff that you wouldn't normally want to do. Mm -hmm. I think this is just a process that I'm still going through. And yeah, it's, um, it's crazy to really show that side of me on national television and having 
a crazy response in how many queer Asians or Asians in general really feel that way. That's what I wanted to ask, just as a follow-up to that, is you must have gotten a response, particularly from, I mean, the one thing that I think we all know about the gay community is, even though we are inclusive, we are, the queer community is inclusive, at the same time, we also can be toxic as to members of our own community and sometimes isolating and and segregate and being very discriminatory. So I wanted to know with in particular to like what you were saying about the response you received from the Asian queer community like that must have that must have rang true for what you were experiencing and been positive that so many people also felt the same way you feel. Yeah, I feel like for many Asians growing up we've never really seen Asian representation especially in Western media and every time you see an Asian it's kind of like a diversity hire or like the clown character in a movie or something and I feel like Asians aren't a race to really be very vocal and speak up about a lot of things like we don't really fight for our rights or not saying that we don't fight but like we fight not in a very loud direct way mm-hmm. and i feel like going on this show i just felt like a lot of pressure to really do a good job and representing asians in general and after showing that vulnerable side of me i felt like hopefully by showing that it really gives a lot of you know a lot of asian representation that we re- need right now to show a lot of Asians well, out there that, in a, in a positive you know, there light. are many types of. Exactly. There's many types of ways in which you can yeah. find the confidence to be, to stand yeah. in your own two feet, to stand on your own ground, if you will. And that's that you did it in a beautiful way. So I just commend you for that. I also want to ask Plain, Plain, you this season, you know, you, you were very direct in many ways and you had now, of course, so many memes came out of this season, but the one meme that came out of this season, probably the meme, is the kudos for spilling moment, which I find hilarious that it came from such a serious moment, and yet we turned that into a hilarious meme. I wanted to know, how are you surprised that that became as big as it has become? And what do you think of, what was it about that moment and your delivery in that moment that made that so meme-worthy? Um, I think I just, I tend to be a very, very dry person um, in my delivery and my humor. Of course, that was not not intended as a humorous moment. It was, you know, meant as a heartwarming way to console my sister um, at the time. But yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody could have predicted that going viral, you know, or or becoming a meme, I should say. Um, I, it's interesting because we were sort of, um, uh, warned by, or or told by, by the story team preemptively that, you know, there are certain moments that get memefied post show that nobody, nobody sees coming. So that, and, and we, we were like, yeah, yeah, sure. You know what I mean? There's no way that you know, anything could possibly, you know, come out of that. But lo and behold, honey, you know, where where we least expected it, uh, the memification struck. So um yeah, I think it was it was pretty unexpected for for everybody, including, you know, the 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 team responsible for editing and story on drag race. You know, I, totally. I think that the internet just is a beast of its own and people just take certain certain things and certain moments and just run with it mm-hmm. and um it's it's very it's very fun though it's it's great it's like it contributes to this whole you know pop culture soup yeah that um you know gay and queer people like ourselves uh you we know, just eat it up we eat, we, it, we up. eat it up and we like we sort of like um use it as as fuel to, to fuel our, uh, you know, bizarre queer lingo mm-hmm. planes, yeah. if you will. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Well, Safira, I wanted to know from you, because like, now you had mentioned on the show, how many times did you audition for Drag Race? I forget. Eleven. Eleven. Okay. So, which is amazing. And because of that, obviously, you are a very seasoned queen. You, you, know, you know the ins and outs of drag in so many different ways. And for for younger queens, you know, I, I wanted to know what 
you, I feel like people look at you and they're like, you probably weren't worried about anything going into Drag Race. You had, you had no concerns, but I'm sure you did. So like, I wanted to know what were you most concerned about? What were you worried about going into Drag Race? I have, um, my mind is very, I'm a Libra. And so I think of every single thing and sometimes that gets in my way. And so my biggest concern was getting in my own way. Um, it was just like not allowing myself to be present. Um, but while doing that, I made sure to not be focused on that. And so mm -hmm. I kind of just like, there were moments where I wasn't allowed, allowing myself to be present, AKA the time when I drank my, um, um, my immunity potion. And mm -hmm. also I would even say the, um, makeover challenge. I wasn't allowing myself to be present because I chose to wear that. I didn't have to wear that skirt. Yeah. <laughs> I could yeah. just won the top. Also, yeah. by the way, that is not Maya's outfit. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't hers. It was my own. Okay. Uh, I just want to put that out there. But no, I, I did not have to do that. And because I was so worried about wherever, whatever was happening in that moment, mm -hmm. I wasn't being present. And those are the two times that I would say that I really got in my own way. Um, number one, I just didn't have to drink that potion. It, there was just no reason to do it. But, yeah. you know, I did it anyway. Um, and then... It's just like getting out of oneself, yeah, out of one's head. Mm -hmm. Because the rest of it, I really wasn't concerned about anything else. I really was, I felt very, very prepared in that way. Mm -hmm. I have been doing this for 14 years. It'll be 15 years this year wow. um, in a couple months. And it's just like, like, I'm like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I was raised as a performer. I've been raised in production. It's just mm -hmm. not new for me, but but that doesn't mean that this thing right here isn't going to say some stuff and yeah. make, well, what if I'm on, what if I, well, what if, what if this is the moment? What if, oh no, you know, you just gotta get out of your own way. And that's something everyone can relate to, I think, in any field and anything you're doing for sure. Nymphia, I wanted to ask you because one of the things that I thought was so poignant from this season is you are Drag Race's first Taiwanese drag queen to be on the show, which mm -hmm. is amazing. And you do such a great job and you can, it, I think it resonates through the television, sort of how much you love Taiwanese drag and the drag culture there and what it can offer to drag and the drag conversation. Because so often we only know the drag in our, on what's on television and in our local community. We don't see other examples of drag. I mean, I remember going to like the UK for the first time and experiencing drag there and being like, this is so camp and fun and different from what I'm noticing in, in Los Angeles. So I wanted to know from you, what is it about sort of, you're, the Taiwanese drag culture and what you love so much about the Taiwanese queer community in general that you wanted to talk about it so openly on Drag Race this season. I think because Taiwan is such a small island, the community there is so tight and it's like a big family, like everyone kind of knows each other in a way. And I think that just is it's like island mentality, like we kind of like stick together and mm -hmm. And it's still developing as the drag scene. So it's very vibrant and very fresh. And everyone has this drive to really do drag in a way. Mm -hmm. And I really like, because I've traveled the world to a few different cities and seeing the drags there. And it's just like really interesting to see like the drag culture in every different country. And every country has like their own flavor of drag. And I mm -hmm. think it's really beautiful to see the diversity of how drag forms in different scenarios and environments. And so I really like to, you know, incorporate like Taiwanese culture, like night markets, the vibrancy of that, and like temple fairs and traditional like acts in temples or like electronic car shows and pole dancing yes. while you're in a place of, um, what's that word when you um, pray? Uh, church? Temple? Buddha? Worship. Worship. So like in places of worship, you would see naked ladies doing pole dancing. And it's just like this localness and this like freedom in Taiwanese culture that I really grasp at and I really uh -huh. like to incorporate in my drag. And there's just like so many fun different things in Taiwanese culture mm -hmm. that I really like to put in what I do. I, I, and, and you can, we see that in what you do. Well, Plain, I wanted to ask you, and this sort of goes to all three of you, I wanna ask all three of you this question as well, but I wanna start with Plain because I mean, the, you have, you have a, a presence about you that is a, 
you can say whatever you want about me and I don't give any fucks because I know I'm great sort of vibe, which is wonderful. And the, and the confidence behind that is amazing. And then when that gets applied to crazy trolls on social media, it takes on a different level. And the social media response to dra- the social media response to reality television, I, I was just talking with someone about this the other day, is so unhinged because even though you all are celebrities, you're also normal, regular people with jobs and rent and things to pay and livelihoods and family and all of the things. And the way that people respond online can be disgusting and gross and horrible. So I wanted to know from someone who is so no f- is so attitude, how do you respond to the sometimes backlash on social media? And then I want to let both Safira and Nymphia also answer that as well. Um, well, I feel like this, this sort of experience of being on Drag Race, it really platforms you like no other reality television show. I think it's like the the phenomenon of Drag Race is that uh, more so than any other reality television show, in my opinion, the contestants become, uh, you know, stars, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, and they gain, gain a, gain a very massive following and well comparatively to what they used to have and this happens over a very short period of time so it's kind of hard to initially navigate that sort of fan discourse you know having so many people talk about you and have opinions about you all at once especially people who you know uh drag is a pretty it's a pretty it remains you know uh just despite the success the mainstream success of drag race it remains sort of like a niche Mm -hmm. queer art form um so to have all these people who have nothing to do with drag no knowledge of drag and what it takes to do what we do have you know opinions about us all at once and share those opinions on you know a pu- public forums online it's it's a lot because we're used to you know one or two talking about us behind our backs in our local scene not a million people chiming in on you all at once on social media um so it's a bit of an adjustment for sure but you know, uh, experienced and learned queens, uh, su- such as myself, you know, mm-hmm. we we have grown to have a thick skin because we we don't just we don't just deal with with faceless people on social media. We deal with real hate in real life, honey. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, we, you know, I, I'm from I'm from Boston, honey. So I've I've, you know, walked through Fenway and drag and experienced, you know, people yeah. slinging slinging sh- and yelling at me from across the street, honey. So I, you, you know, that it, it is what it is. You know, it's important to just, you know, like I said, it is it is an adjustment. You kind of have to reel yourself back and be like, okay, 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 okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, these people may be having opinions, but they're no, at the end of the day, they're nobodies. They're, you know, faceless profiles. And, you know, this is this is what we signed up for. We signed up for the good and the bad. Yeah. You know, we're, we're attention- uh keeping keeping our names in people's mouths is what what keeps our our lights on and our bills paid so you know at the end of the day you just have to keep in mind that all attention is good attention honey uh well most most attention is good attention uh and um particularly particularly hate you know what i mean uh rupaul our mother you know she has the best mantra for that if they ain't paying your bills pay them no mind so it's true um, it's yeah. true. And also, too, I mean, I interviewed Rue not long ago, and one of the things that she said that I thought was so fascinating is that, you know, drag drag will never be mainstream. And I think there's some power in that because it creates these sort of amazing high-heeled soldiers out there who just keep keep going through and and being the forces for, I think, good and, and, and change in our community. But also, if it is more people are watching, well, then maybe other people will see the need for that change as well. I wanted to also ask Safira and Nymphia that same thing because... I, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm a white person, clearly, so I don't experience what the backlash is like on social media, particularly for queens of color, which I sometimes, I'm guessing, can be much even harder, and they can be even more vocal oftentimes. So I wanted to know from both of you how you have navigated the world of social media post-drag race. I'll start with Safira. Being a um, queen of color is different from being a black queen even um the history of black people in america is a deep um very textured one and uh it is very uh and and then beyond being black being a darker black queen Mm -hmm. in 
uh, drag is something else. And I love the fact that I was raised to love who I am, no matter what. I was raised not only to be proud of being black, but I'm also a Christian. I was just raised to be proud of being who I am. And if it weren't for that, I probably would be having a really hard time right now because, um, you know, you notice certain people get more attention than other people. Being a black person, you get looked over a lot. And it's okay because the people who love you, they love you really hard. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that I really enjoy just by being myself. Mm -hmm. I am a black queen, yes, but I'm also Sephira Crystal, a person like no other person. And the fact that I was able to show my love and caring spirit and my heart on the show makes me, endears more people to me for a different reason beyond my skin color, beyond my drag, beyond my talents. It's because of my heart they see. And, you know, maybe I would love to have um, the attention that other people have, but I love what I have and I'm appreciative for that. And that's all I can, I mean, I can't focus on the people who don't like me. <laughs> like, they don't like me, so why would I focus on them? As RuPaul, as Plain Jane uh, has uh, harking back to RuPaul, if they're not paying my bills, then I'm not paying them no mind. Like, yeah. I don't have any time to think about those people. Um, it is, but it, it, it is a little, um, it can be disheartening sometimes when you done really, really well. I mean, I probably got shadow banned twice for nothing. <laughs> for no reason at yeah. all. Um, yeah. and it was like, well, that's also the problem is that, that the platforms are also part of the problem. It's not just the people on them, but it's also the platforms not rec representing and, and, and following and thinking that anything queer is somehow spam or bad or needs to be shadow banned or whatever it is. You use a certain word or whatever. And these are just words that we use in our community casually. So yeah, that's also a huge part of the problem as well. Thank you for bringing that up. Nymphia, I wanted to know your response to sort of how you've handled social media backlash. Um, I kind of am a disassociative, dis is that how you would say it? Yeah, disassociative person. Yes. So I kind of just disassociate and I don't, I mean, sometimes I look through the comments just to see what's there. And I feel like sometimes, yeah, I guess it doesn't really affect me too deeply, but sometimes I do get affected by it. But I do like seeing sometimes negative comments just to you know, see what opinions are out there. But ultimately, I, ha I always have to remind myself that, you know, you can't please everyone and it's always you and what you want to do that's most important. And always remember that there's more people who support you than people who hate you, like Definitely. at least in the comments and stuff like that. And just really focus on the positive one. Yeah, focus on the love. That's really what it's mm -hmm. all about. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to wrap things up with one last question. So the three one of you will be or in drag race history you never know more than one of you might be the next winner of rupaul's drag race season 16 and i feel like i you know i have many fellow peers in the journalistic world who ask the question of what what why do you want to win rupaul's drag race i don't want to ask that question i want to ask each one of you and i'll start with plain why do you think your two other sisters in this chat room would be great winners of RuPaul's Drag Race? Um, well, it's it's very hard for me to be complimentary of anybody other than myself. Uh, you should you should know this. Um, but, you know, I think that, uh, I mean, I, their, their work on the show and off the show really speaks for itself. Nymphia is creative and unique, like nobody that I, I know. She, uh, she is truly, you know, uh you, you know a great representative for you know the future of future of drag in terms of her just innovation when it comes to fashion uh when it comes to you know style and she's just she's just an artist and she's um very very unique but impactful in what she produces and what she represents and um yeah, she's she's just and and not only that, but she's she is incredibly well rounded as well. So, um, I think Nymphia is a great candidate for that reason. I think you know the same can be 
said for for Safira, Safira is an extremely well-rounded queen. Uh, she is a professional through and through. And, you know, uh, apart from her many, many talents as demonstrated on the show, she's also she also has a heart of gold. So, uh, you know, I think that's that's also something that our community um, needs right now. So, yeah, I think both of these queens, you know, I, I think that, it, you know, in my congenial era, you know, it's truly it I truly would have seen no other two queens or, or wanted to share this this finale uh, with any other two queens from our season. I think that apart from myself, who, of course, I am gorgeous, stunning and amazing, I think apart from myself, you know, these are uh, two of the fiercest contenders, fiercest queens, and the two yeah. queens, in my opinion, are going to make the biggest impact after the show. So mm, let's. I'll go to Nymphia next. Nymphia, why why do you think Sophia and Plain will be great winners of Drag Race? I'm trying to think of all my good English grammar to really conjure up a good. Speech. You went to school in England. We know you have it. Don't play. We know. Well, that was for university. We know. We Nothing know. to do with English class. <laughs> um. I think this top three is fierce and sickening. Like everyone represents so many different things and we're all so different from each other. And for that reason alone, I feel all three of us deserve any sort of crown in our own right. Like playing throughout the whole season has shown that she is great TV. She knows how to do, she she shows good drag and um, just amazing at what she does and is a versatile and can do all sorts of challenge kind of queen. And Safira, on the other hand, is, as Plain said, a heart of gold and just really leads with the heart and love and caring and compassion. And that is a sign of a true winner. And um, what else? <laughs> And also the level of drag that Safira is able to present, all that big drag. And all that big drag. I think that that sums it up. Right. I I think like all three of all, all two of them are present such good levels of drag, but like in different lanes. Yeah. And yeah. Totally. Safira, how about you? Well, I think that. Uh, Plain is actually not nearly as mean or catty as she seems. She's very, actually very sweet. Um, and sh I have seen her be the sweetest person to um, the fans. And, you know, she'll come for you if you come for her. But at the end of the day, she is, she is here to represent for our um, community. And because of that, not only is, does she have a beautiful heart, but she also is stunning. And she can act sing, dance, she can act rap dance and uh, uh, perform. She's an amazing performer. She is, she's got a presence on stage and on television and in movies. I bet you know when when they come, that is like no other. She's got it. She's got that it factor. And I would say mm -hmm. the same thing for Nymphia. She has the it factor. There's some things that they call it a je ne sais quoi in French. Like I don't know what it is, but I love it. Um, she is not only stunning in drag, she's stunning out of drag. And once she figures that out, she will definitely be able to take on the entire world in no, no matter what form. Mm -hmm. um, but she also, her mind, the way that she conceives of drag in this way that is so beautiful and the way that she's able to not only bring her culture, but like the cultures from around her mm -hmm. area as well. Like she's not Japanese, but she did this Buto thing. And I was just like, that's freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that she's just able to truly just be a, especially fashion juggernaut. She is a fashion juggernaut. She is gorgeous. And honestly, she's funny. She is talented. She's got, she can, she can actually, when she focuses, she can really do all these things. And I think that, the world needs someone mm -hmm. to look up to, to go, oh, that's just perfection right there. And these yeah. two girls possess that. Well, I wanted to just take a moment to thank all three of you for doing this, but also to, I mean, I, you know, I watch Drag Race, I love Drag Race, but I think this is one of the most exciting finalists that we've had on the show since uh, the season with Bob, Naomi and Kim to me, season eight. And I think, I think it's I think it's so exciting and so thrilling. But I also wanted to thank you 
for just being amazing lights in a time that both with for many queer people, for trans people, there's a lot of struggle out there. There's a lot of hate coming to people's ways in lots of different ways. And to have an hour, an hour and a half, however long it is, every single Friday night on television to take people away and have a safe space to be silly, catty, funny, dramatic, whatever, the three of you allowed the community to have that. And so you should feel very proud of yourselves for, for doing that for the community. You've done a great service. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. Subscribe to my podcast, The Parting Shot, and my newsletter for the culture for everything in entertainment.